are going to discuss the nasopulmonary drug delivery system so this is a disclaimer for the viewers in this session we are going to discuss mechanisms of nasal absorption before discussing the mechanism there is a need to discuss the nasal anatomy and physiology so let us see the nasal anatomy and the physiology so here i have shown the anatomy of the nose the nostrils are a pair of nasal cavities which are divided by the nasal septum so here it's a nasal septum this is the nasal cavity right and uh, these are the turbinates and here it's a mucous membrane and the sinus the total volume of the nasal cavity it is uh, approximately 15 to 20 ml with a total surface area of 150 to 200 cm square nasal cavities are covered by a mucosa with a thickness of 2 to 4 mm whose function is 20% olfactory and 80% respiratory the nasal epithelium has a relatively high permeability and only two cell layer separate the nasal lumen from the dense blood vessel network in the lamina propria cavity which is lined with three types of epithelia that is squamous mucosa then the respiratory mucosa and the olfactory mucosa so this this is here it's a squamous mucosa this is the respiratory mucosa and here it's a olfactory mucosa so anatomically nose consist of the pair of nasal cavities that is the nostrils which is divided by a nasal septum the total volume of nasal cavity it is approximately 15 to 20 ml with a total surface area of 150 to 200 cm square the nasal cavities are covered by mucosa with a thickness of 2 to 4 mm whose function is 20% olfactory and 80% respiratory the nasal epithelium has a relatively high permeability and only two cell layers separate the nasal lumen from the dense blood vessel network in the lamina propria cavity which is lined with the three types of epithelia that is uh, squamous respiratory and the olfactory so here it's a olfactory region which comprises the olfactory mucosa right then the here it's a between the middle turbinate and inferior turbinate respiratory mucosa is present here it's a superior turbinate and here it's a squamous mucosa and here it's a nostrils the mucosa in the anterior part of nose is a squamous and without cilia already we have seen in the previous slide the anterior part of nose consist of the squamous epithelium which is without cilia within the anterior nostrils a transitional epithelium is found that precedes the respiratory epithelium the olfactory epithelium is present in the posterior part of nasal cavity the epithelium contains ciliary cells that produce a unidirectional flow of mucus towards the pharynx the drug deposited posteriorly in the nose is cleared 
more rapidly from the nasal cavity than a drug deposited anteriorly because the clearance is slower at the anterior part of nose than in more ciliated posterior the nasal lining has the same lining as the rest of the respiratory tract with a pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium there are up to 200 cilia per cell whose tips lies in the superficial gel layer so here this is the representative structure of the nasal mucosa so here is a cilia on which the mucosal lining is present here is the pseudo stratified columnar epithelium with a globate cells which are responsible for production of muc mucosa that is the mucus here it's a mixed gland then the venous plexus in the lamina propria so here it's a lamina propria and ethmoid bone right so the mucosa in the anterior part of the nose is squamous and without cilia cilia are absent in the anterior part of the nose within the anterior nostrils a transitional epithelium is found that precedes the respiratory epithelium the olfactory epithelium is present in the posterior part of the nasal cavity and the epithelium contains ciliary cells that produce a unidirectional flow of mucus towards the pharynx a drug deposited posteriorly in the nose is cleared more rapidly from the nasal cavity than a drug deposited anteriorly because clearance is slower at the anterior part of the nose than in the more ciliated posterior the nasal lining has the same lining as the rest of respiratory tract with a pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium there are up to 200 cilia per cell whose tip lies in the superior gel layer at the anterior end of the inferior and middle turbinate which is the area which has the most contact with the inspired air there can be the metaplasia with the cuboidal cells which have no cilia so here it's a respiratory region so here is the olfactory region this is the atrium and here the squamous epithelium is present so this is the structure of the nasal mucosa right so these are the cilia this is a mucus layer isn't it and again here one more figure i have shown so these are the basal cells then non ciliated columnar cells then ciliated columnar cells this is a mucosa cilia right here it's the globate cell and this is the basal membrane the globate cells are present in the mucus membrane which covers the nasal turbinate and the atrium and it secretes the mucus so globate cells are responsible for the secretion of the mucus the mucus secretion is composed of about 95% water 2% mucin 1% salts and 1% of other proteins such as albumin immunoglobulins lysozyme and lactoferrin and 1% lipids so here the mucus layer act as barrier for the nasal absorption so this is the first barrier for the nasal absorption the ph of nasal secretion is about 5.5 to 6.5 so this is about the anatomy and physiology of the nose let us see the human nasal epithelium characteristics so here i have listed the nasal sections that is the vestibuli atrium respiratory region and the olfactory region then the epithelial characteristic cells and functions their surface area vascularization and the permeability so in the case of uh, vestibuli 
the stratified squamous and keratinized epithelial cells with a nasal hair which functions as support and the protection the surface area it is approximately 0.6 cm square the vascularization it is uh, very low and permeability to the drug it is also very poor then atrium it comprises stratified squamous cells which supports and uh, pseudo stratified cells again it is going for the support the surface area it is not found vascularization it is low and permeability it is reduced in the case of respiratory region the columnar non ciliated cells for the support columnar ciliated cells for support and mucillary clearance then globate cells for the mucus secretion basal cells for the progenitors of other cell types the surface area of respiratory region it is approximately 130 cm square vascularization it is very high and the drug permeability is also good in the case of olfactory region substantacular cells for the support and uh, olfactory receptor cells for olfaction perception then the basal cells for progenitors of other cell types the surface area for the olfactory region it is about 15 cm square vascularization is very high and uh, it gives permeability of a drug to the cns directly so here it's a olfactory region and here it's a respiratory region so whatever the absorbed drug from olfactory region it goes to the brain whereas the from the respiratory region it reaches to the systemic circulation so here with we have finished the anatomy and physiology of the nodes let us see the mechanism of uh, nasal absorption how the drug it is going to be absorbed from the nasal cavity look at the figure there are four processes are there by which the drug it is going to be absorbed from the nasal cavity very first one that is a transcellular diffusion second one that is a paracellular transport between the cells then third one that is a vesical mediated transport and fourth one that is a carrier mediated transport very first step in the nasal absorption that is the absorbed drug from nasal cavity must pass through the mucus layer it is the first step in the nasal absorption so this is the mucus layer so initially whatever the formulation which contains a drug it it should cross this mucus layer isn't it then and then only the drug it is going to be absorbed into the systemic circulation by the transcellular diffusion paracellular transport vesical mediated transport or a carrier mediated transport system drugs absorbed by the two mechanism through the nasal cavity that is a paracellular transport and the transcellular transport in the case of paracellular transport it is a aqueous route of transport through intracellular tight junctions or the open clefts of the epithelial cells of the nasal mucosa it is a slow and passive in the case of transcellular transport transport through lipoidal membrane and active transport via carrier mediated transport means or transport through the opening of tight junctions so in this way the drug it is going to be absorbed from the nasal cavity let us see the remaining mechanisms from the nasal route yet another possibility it is uh, available as i have said that the olfactory region it gives entry to the drug directly to the cns or the brain so the nose to brain transport so it is possible to target the brain by using the nasal route of administration there are two ex 
Well, cellular roots are there first across the olfactory neurons and second across the trigeminal nerve. After reaching the olfactory bulb or a trigeminal region, the pharmaceutical agent is entered other brain regions by simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion, by arterial pulsation driven perivascular pump. The drug is taken up by the olfactory sensory neurons, which projects to the olfactory bulb. The extracellular route is between the supportive cells, where the drug passing through the tight junctions, the paracellular cleft, lamina propria, primural space, perineural space, and ultimately to the subarachnoid space where it is transported to distal targets around the CNS. So look at the figure. So here it's a olfactory encelting cell, right? Then here it's a olfactory sensory neuron. So here it's a, suppose the drug is given by the nasal root. So this is a drug. So this uh, olfactory neuro, olfactory sensory neurons takes the drug and it is going to be through olfactory bulb. It, it reaches to the central nervous system. Then yet another mechanism is there through the tight junctions. The drug is going to be reached to the distal CNS region. Yet another uh, figure I have shown over here. So this is the olfactory sensory neuron, isn't it? Yet another mechanism that is the by formation of a vesicle drug is going to be transported from nasal cavity into the CNS. And these are the tight junctions, isn't it? These are the supportive cells. Here it's a uh, OSN that is the olfactory sensory neuron, right? And the drug reaches to the central nervous system or the brain. So in the case of nose to brain transport, two extracellular routes very first across the olfactory neuron. So this is the olfactory neuron and second across the trigeminal nerve. After reaching the olfactory bulb, or a trigeminal region, the pharmaceutical agent enters other brain regions by simple diffusion or facilitated diffusion by arterial pulsation driven perivascular pump. The drug is taken up by the OSN which projects to the olfactory bulb. So this is a OSN which projects to the olfactory bulb. The extravascular the extracellular route is between the supportive cells. So these are the supportive cells. These are the supportive cells, isn't it? Where the drug is passing through the tight junctions, paracellular cleft, the lamina propria, perineural space, and ultimately to the subarachnoid space where it is transported to distal targets around the CNS. So in this way, the drug is going to be permeated from the nasal tract into the brain. That is nose to brain transport. And this concept, it is utilized for targeting the brain or for the development of brain targeted drug delivery system. So in this way, the drug, it is going to be absorbed from the nasal cavity. So in this part, we have discussed the nasal anatomy and physiology and mechanisms of nasal absorption.